Assembly Hall. Welcome to Big Ten Basketball, sponsored by Jeep Ram Cherokee. A couple of programs with their sights set on returning to the NCAA tournament. It is Nebraska and number 25, Indiana. Welcome inside. Joe Davis with Bill Raftery. And Bill, big game tonight, both in terms of boosting those NCAA tournament resumes. And you look at the Big Ten standings pretty jumbled up in the middle. It's, it's a seeding game, basically. Yeah. I think both of them will make the tournament. Two sound teams. Very important, I think, for Indiana to handle the ISOs, rebound. And I think Juwan Moore has got to get to the free throw line and counter that. Nebraska mix the defenses up a little, you know, take them out of their flow. Take a look at the starting lineups brought to you by Jeep Grand Cherokee. Nebraska, one of the oldest teams in the Big Ten. Watson, Palmer, and Copeland, all seniors. And you mentioned Juwan Morgan. The Hoosiers led by Morgan and Langford, who as a freshman, one of the leading scorers in the Big Ten. In fact, in this game, we have two of the top four scorers in the conference. Well, Casey's put a lot of pressure on James Palmer out of the gate. Yeah. 22 is the number. We will mark him down. And Nebraska trying to make it back-to-back -back wins after their first back-to-back -back losses of the year. And as you touched on during the pregame show, Bill, looking for their first Big Ten road win of the season. Well, Indiana tries to get back on track after the back-to-back -back losses in this Big Ten gauntlet. Michigan and Maryland losses have them at 12 and 4 and 3 and 2 in the conference. Joe Davis, Indiana goes a little bit, man. Nice slip to the goal. The big fella, a little bit large. That is Isaiah Roby coming off the career high 22 in his last game. It's interesting. Both big guys move their opponent away from the basket. They're tough covers. Here is Romeo Langford. Up top to Justin Smith, who bricks his first shot. And that's interesting. Roby is on him, and I think for a reason. Terrific offensive rebound to Smith. Ooh, mishandled by Watson. Yeah, but he get it back. And now Thomas Allen, Nebraska, hits its first two shots. This kid is a fun guy to watch. Very confident offensive player. Can catch and shoot threes. You saw him put it on the deck that trip. Mention Nebraska, the oldest team in the conference. Allen just hit that shot as their only new starter this year. Why did you look at me when you said oldest? I didn't. That's in your head. Why did you accept this? You wear it well, Bill. Smith into the lane. Tough shot. And he's missed his first two. Cleared by Copeland. Nice shot. Screening. And either slipping or getting to the open area of this team. Copeland makes tough shots. Nice kick. See, if I were Roby, if I were that good, I'd take that shot. And he can make that. Palmer will take it and bury it. Ooh, what's the bounce? James Palmer, 20 per game, third in the Big Ten. And what a start for the Huskers. Big time. He's got to just be careful foul-wise. A little rub ball screen. It's kind of a revert back to what Indiana was known for over the first couple of months. That is slow starts. They flipped the script on that at Maryland. Boy, they sure did. Their yeah. best halves of the year and open that game. They package that. Here's Langford stepping into a three. Morgan the offensive rebound. That's blocked at the rim by Roby. Here is Roby taking it hard inside and drawing the foul. And that time I'm working too, Joe. He's a guy that gets in some foul trouble. But I love this little slip to the hole. Really solid play. Open middle. And they are tough when they don't have a post up. And that little bounce. Get the puppies organized and drill it. Playing like a big timer at times. This kid Palmer. Great with the bounce too. Tried to knife it inside the roll. He's stolen away. And back comes Indiana. Still looking for their first points of the game. Allen gambled. Maybe to hustle back. Here comes Lankford. Green gets the defender off his feet and is offline with a jump shot. And they get some numbers if they push. Watson does and shovels it off to Allen, who finds Roby spinning and hitting. That's what's tough about this guy. A much-needed timeout. They look fresh, don't they, wow. Nebraska? Exploding out of the gates. A 9-0 lead and a timeout for Archie Miller. Get the big fella some touches. He is a talented guy. In around can provide a lift. His team has started here on the road where they have won a couple of times since joining the Big Ten. 
in his seventh season as the head coach, and Archie Miller in his second season. Boy, what's his message in that early time? Uh, to get back to basics. we got to get to the foul line, get something going to the rim. And I would think the two mainstays right here, Romeo or Jawan, they give this foul, they give away that far from the goal. I think if I were a coach, it would really bug me to give a foul on that ball speed. And good players search out the hip on that drive, too, to get the contact. Especially on these two teams, Bill, neither of which is deep. Now that's very important. Great point. Nice collapse on the defense. Here's Morgan hitting a three. So out of the timeout, they snap an 0 for 5 to begin from the field. Why not let him dominate? This kid can really bury you both sides, in and out. Watson fires. I know he can make it, but they had a little flow going. Really nice handle. Here's Rob Finnessy. Missed three games of the concussion. Came back, played just a handful of minutes against Maryland the other night. Well, they need him. This kid can finish with the rim, can he? Oh, Langford, as good as they come in that regard, gets his first points. I think he had a coming out party against Maryland. Just wanting it. I think he's such a humble kid trying to blend in and now establishing his game. He scored 28 points in that three point loss against Maryland on Friday. A nice little back screen to get the big guy to the box. Roby, I like what he was doing there, telling him to kick the corner. Allen gets blocked by Morgan. It starts a fast break with Finnessy. Rob Finnessy can't finish, and Copeland's got it as Nebraska tries to counter. Nice job by Roby avoiding the foul. Give it to him. He can make that. He's passed up a couple of good works from out there, and instead it's knocked out of bounds. Yeah, just trying to be within the system. You like this guy? He's a keeper. Watch the springs, the elevation. He's got the finger roll, too, like the Iceman. Not quite this trip. Solid. Big Ten basketball is sponsored by Jeep Grand Cherokee. Back inside Assembly Hall, where Nebraska scored the first nine, but Indiana has responded with five in a row, including a couple from Romeo Langford, who is as good as anybody in the country at finishing around the rim. Coming out party for a big game against Marquette early in the year. His handle is really impressive. Initially, I thought he'd just like to go right, but he can go left, put it on the deck, and finish at the rim. A popular figure in this neck of the woods in this State. And tonight, the explosion. Very tough to handle and contain it. He's shooting a little more confidence, Joe. 20 of his 28, which matched a career high against Maryland, came in the second half. Like you said, it looked like he finally kind of took things into his own hands as Durham misses his first shot. Durham a little high ball replaced by Durham. That little back screen to get the big guy in the body. He is tough right here, that mid-nice pop. Got Morgan off his feet, got blocked at the rim by Justin Smith. What a reaction! Just in time! Smith, Adley Stevenson with Jalen Brunson, and oh my, you expose that ball like that, you can pay a reposterize. <laughs> Great reaction. Under 10 to shoot as they inbound it. Here comes Watson. Outside to Copeland, who can shoot it from there. Really, they all can. They can. Starting five for Nebraska. They play a lot of minutes, these guys. But they didn't come off of the floor in the second half and win against Penn State on Thursday, those five starters. Roby down to the floor to steal it from Morgan. He does a great job deflecting passes in there. Now Watson and another rejection by Justin Smith. That's why you run the floor. Transition defense, so important. But I'm impressed with Roby going on the deck at the other end, but not giving up on the play at all. Rising to the occasion big time. Davison now a little gimpy, did you think, today with yeah. the ankle? Of course, I, I think part of that is not Morgan being tired, but the one foul spell him a little. He has a tendency to get a cheapie. Yeah, first time we see either one of these teams go onto the bench much. Here's Roby with a clean look. He takes this one, and that's why. That's right? unbelievable. I think the number is 37. Uh, Tim Miles wasn't sure of a two minute, 30 second drill 
He leads the team in making the most threes in that drill. Thirty-seven threes in two and a half minutes. Right, exactly. Can you do the quick math for me on that? How many this? Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I can't. Out of bounds, last touch. Thanks for putting the pressure on me on that play, but any time you get a piece of that paint, heads turn, and the ability to have a little nylon from deep. What a weapon by the big fella. There's actually a foul on Durham that sends it to Nebraska. Durham will take a seat. Sloppy play that last trip. Mm -hmm. That's something Indiana's been better at lately. Turnovers have been an issue for the first couple months, but just seven turnovers each of the last two games. Well, it all started with Duke, and you know, they were never themselves in that particular game. This is another thing a lot of guys can do in this club. Post up, number empty. To Roby can sort of cushion this. This is not going to be that deep threat. Smith thought about it instead. Into the lane. Outside Fennessy. And a nice rebound by Nana Akenton. He was under the weather last week and only played a handful of minutes. Palmer over Smith this time and uses the glass. He has a great handle. A beautiful crossover. Both sides of the floor and explode to the rim. Langford, leaner, no. Nice check out again, Roby on Davis. Got to get back. Roby puts it on the deck, takes it into Davis, and gets called for the offensive foul. Tell you what, I thought he was by him, Joe. Yeah. Hey. Well, I guess he got him pretty square. That's a big body to miss. And Ron Davis, 6'10", 255 in there, drawing that charge. Kobe sits down with his first foul. And here's the 1-3-1. Chris Mack from Xavier and Miles talked about this. He uses a lot more. They got some great length up, out top. You see Copeland on the line, Palmer at the top. Tough to get entries here. End up with a corner jumper, rebounding. Weak side's important. Copeland pokes that one out of bounds with nine to shoot. You just don't see a whole lot of it, and anytime you do see it, it's like it shocks the system of the offense. I think you're right. It throws people off. You know, all of a sudden, you don't go as a matter of form in designated areas. It's all a feeling. Getting free, doing the right job with the dribble drive. That one trickles all the way to the midcourt stripe. Langford tracks it down. With the shot clock winding down, he puts it up, but no good. And Borkart clears the board. This is a confident offensive team. That what a nice look at five. Copeland, good field after the defenders get off their feet and then finish. And an 11-point lead early for the Huskers. Tough to get vision. You got to step through. And that's a steal for Thomas Allen. Allen pushing to Palmer. Adjusted mid air. They got the follow from Copeland. Boy, are they ready to play? Great defensive reaction by Allen. Set that up. Boy, Tim Miles said today that he thought losing those back-to-back -back games a couple of weeks ago took some of their confidence, some of their swagger mm -hmm. from them. Even though they beat Penn State last week, he didn't think that they got that confidence back. It looks like they found it here in the opening. Uh, I think they've actually heard voices talking to some of the coaches, people in the area thinking they should be better. And it is ugly for Indiana right now. Oh, that is squeezing. It's ugly for Nebraska, too, there. But oh. it has been all Huskers so far. Now, their NET standing is impressive at 14, but the ability to get down the floor, be in right position to dominate. Send it in, Isaac! Hey, 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 good rebound. Way to clean up. You're doing a good job. Stay with it. Or stay with it. Okay, we got a drive play for him. When Tim Miles was in his early 20s. He and a buddy went as fans to the 1991 Final Four in Indianapolis. And they had the semifinal games, of course, Saturday. Sunday, they decided to take a road trip and checked off a few boxes. So Tim Miles claims that he hopped the fence at Indy Motor Speedway and watched some practice rounds going on. Kept on driving down to French Lake, Indiana. Snuck onto Larry Bird's property and played a one-on-one -on -one game on a slab of concrete there. And then came here to Assembly Hall 
And he wouldn't say that the doors were locked, but it wasn't exactly open. He and his buddy snuck in and took pictures here. Statue of limitations. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, run out. Uh, the prosecutor and Pitzner now in. They switch away for the 1 3 1. But I love this move. He's got to finish that, though. The Pitzner's playing time has gone down recently. The grad transfer from St. Mary's. But Archie Miller looking for anything he can to jolt this team right now. Copeland from the baseline adds two more. Nice job by Watson with the fine, too. Indiana now almost six minutes wrap without a bucket as Green gets inside. His wraparound pass finds Morgan, who will get it on the second try. He does carve some area out. Always a presence. I think Fitzer can get some shots to elevate. He's got Allen on him at the other end. He's got four or five inches. The whole floor, give an open look like that. That's solid. And that's Watson hitting a three. Last time the Nebraska won here in Bloomington, 26 points for Watson and an upset win that snapped the 26 game home winning streak for the Hoosiers. Eggerton with a tough match. Now, I, I'd like to see at this point Romeo do some damage, get involved a little bit. There's Green nowhere close and a foul on the rebound. Uh, Nebraska. I'm not sure who they give that. Kobe was in the middle of that, too, as well. Indiana, 52%. Ralph, that's number two in the country. Field goal okay. percentage. Nebraska holding them to three for 16 so far tonight. You see both ends of the floor playing solid, but they're getting great shots. And they all can put it on the deck and sort of turn heads and find people. Very unselfish. The flex look at the timeout. Fitzner, that's where he's comfortable. That was pretty deep, though, wasn't it? This step beyond the ring. That was close to St. Mary's. <laughs> yeah, that wanted the experience of playing in the Big Ten for his final year. So came out here to Bloomington to finish up his career. He'll sit down with Nick Roberts. Well, Smith comes in. You know what he can do on that offensive glass as well. Real good coverage by Morgan. They work hard on this. Watson able to split it. Borkhardt follows. And of course, anytime you go, as Morgan did to block a shot, it bears that back for Borchardt with a great read. Tanner Borkhardt needs a root canal. Started feeling pain in his mouth last night. Went to the dentist this morning, got it numbed up, and here he is playing. He's going to have the root canal in the coming days. You said that's what like working with me. <laughs> Feel like a deep one, right? right. And yeah, now Borkhardt has his turnover, which Indiana is mounting up in the early going. The fans really getting restless here. It's more Nebraska playing great. These kids are acting like they're tired of hearing negative things about them on the road, Nebraska. Looking for their first Big Ten road nice win. Fake. Copeland going baseline. He got a lot of contact, but no call as Morgan was there. And a nice wall up, I thought. And now Morgan thought about a three. Instead of drive through traffic. And there's still no signal that the basket will count. And Allen trying to get into charge position. He took the brunt of that, but good aggressive move by Morgan. Anytime you can make shots, people hug you a little bit. Oh, pump and semi fake. Oh, my goodness. They're going to say not on the shoot. floor. Yeah, not yeah. shooting. I'll tell you, I like that continuation on that, didn't you? Yeah. Crowd did too. Archie Miller did too. Give me a whistle, Leah. And Roberts on the floor gives a lot of juice to this lineup, too. Anything lose 50 50 he is really tough. 15 in white. Well, they are long in the denial. Nice cut. Fantasy finding yeah. Smith. Nice connection. That's what he does, though. He's got the qualities of a point guard. Nice to see him back, see him get going. Little duck into the lane on the pin down. 
Good job inside by Morgan. Oh, uh, that's the one. Gone for the reach in. That's number two already. That's what he does indeed. He gets one of those and it kills him. It's the kind of foul that drove you to uh, sit next to me exactly. at a very early age. As unattractive as that is, you're right. <laughs> possession at a time right now. We gotta dig ourselves out. It's gonna start with stops though, fellas. It's always gonna start and stop with us with stops. We gotta dig in and start to get some stops and then get in transition. Offensively, you gotta be willing to be simple. Right now, the pocket bounce pass is wide open. Devontae, you've missed it three times. Uh, the stops are very important. Obviously, go the other way. And uh, counter that with this defense, Joe. Uh, pretty solid effort. They mix it up with a couple of chips of 1-3-1. Three, one. That's the 1-3-1. One, one. But Allen with a wonderful read. And here's the weak side help. Just in the right spot. And I think being old and hearing things, too. Whispers that they, you know, they're not as good as they should be. I think these kids have responded in a beautiful way. Early here. Long way to go. 25-9 lead over Indiana. Actually... Hold a series advantage over the Hoosiers since joining the Big Ten, winning five of the first nine matchups as conference opponents. Try to take another tonight as Allen gets inside, adjusted and couldn't hit. The follow from Copeland was offline as well. Yeah, nice double screen got Allen free. They got the mismatch they want. Fister just can't get it to the right spot. Now they get him back. Pomerano. Here's Fitzner with a baseline jumper, still looking for his first bucket. Uh, much better look, though. I think Roby could do damage inside with Smith on him. Oh, what a tough pass. Yeah, there's a good hand. Roberts coming yeah, up with it. Exactly. That's him. He's the sort of a glue kind of a guy. He can make threes, but he plays within the system. Hasn't scored since November. Part of that has been that he's been banged up with a back issue, but he still plays because he does so many other things well. Here's Palmer one on three. He got fouled from behind. Got a break, really. Nothing there. He's got to eat it, bring it back out. So much to be said for guys who've been down the road. You know, we always tease about age. They just have seen so many things in their response. And they just understand sometimes it's a dilemma, but you can work your way out of it. And you figure that's part of what you're seeing on the other side, too, coming into a tough environment. This is a relatively old Nebraska team mm -hmm. handling it well. Right, extremely so. And a lot of them with the dribble, which is such an effective weapon anymore. Particularly with the hand check and wide open. Copeland got fouled on his way up. Two shots coming. Oh, one of those guys that possesses that ability. Number 55, Kevin Pitzler. Doesn't seem that long ago, Copeland was at Georgetown. Oh, no. Years have flown with Carolina kid. Big time recruit when they got him. All Big East there is a sophomore. He transferred. He went through back surgery. Got healthy in time to play last year. It was honorable mention all Big Ten, and even better here as a senior. Big thing Tim says he can make tough shots. Uh, that's a nice, valuable possession to have. Especially at 6'9". You mm. don't necessarily expect him to be a tough shot maker. No. Well, two. As you noted, Nebraska really doesn't go to the bench often. I'm going to roll pal Mike Lewis on the sideline over there with Tim. You'll see this was his home for four years under Bob Knight. Assistant to Nebraska. There he is. His third season as an assistant. He's got, Tim Miles. He's got some pepper in his game, I'll tell you. He's a lively kid. Al Durham bounces it behind Smith. Puts it in the deck. Stumbled and traveled. Good hands from Allen. It sure was in Copeland move with the legs as well. Complimented with the rake. Here's Michael Lewis, who was the all-time assist leader when he left. He'll be Farrell past him, but still Michael Lewis, number two all-time in that category here. He's really happy. He loves working with Tim because he was at Bummer for a while as well. Tim Molinari there, who was a assistant back in the great days of DePaul. Busting me about their seat in the hallway. I said they used some of my plays, I'm sure. Roby for three. Beautiful stroke, though. Great rotation. 
Here's Langford. Morgan really physical with Roby. I like it. Begging for that basketball, trying to get him a second foul. Look at the length of Roby, though. And doing the homework early. They got Roby. Wow. Huh. That's not good. It's that's a second. That's just got to be let go. He led. Dude, we always talk about doing homework early. It's it's being ahead of the man. He's ahead. He's ahead. There's no foul there. Whew. That's not right. Morgan is a load, though. He keeps busy. Puts the pressure not only on the defender, but the referee. Here at the five-minute mark here in the first half. Morgan from outside. Yeah, that was good, too. Went down it? and out. Uh, a little pick and pop. I think it's Langford time at the other end. He's got to get going. Nice hesitation at Phil. Copeland tries it, around it out for him. Rebound for Morgan. Yeah, we saw Langford really take things into his own hands against Maryland, scoring 28. Finnessy takes it hard inside and banks it in. And that stays the ball with Finnessy. That's what we like to see. Showing a little life and fire right now. It becomes such a key piece before that concussion. That was four games ago, I think, wasn't it? Came back, played 17 minutes, didn't attempt the field goal against Maryland on Friday. But the shot clock right now is frozen as Allen fires it away anyways. And then now it resets to 20. And they're having all kinds of issues. You're yeah, going to need are. a techie like yourself well, you to picked go over right. there. Yeah, I'll be right over. Yeah. Sure. Well, you were on top of things. Do you keep balls and strikes during the summer as well? Um, scoreboard handles that okay. well. Yeah. Everything else, though. Shot clocks. You know, Archie, you figure how many games he's been at. His dad is the coach. Sean and he. His days at North Carolina State. Pretty impressive. Cruiser. Clint. St. Joe's player. Tough, hard-nosed performer. Rick Callett. UMass right there. This freezes pretty quickly. And then again, it reset, but to 20 after the shot. So there it's frozen. The refs are so good with time, I bet they never miss a wake up. No chance. No. No. Because they're busy schedule, they, be they better not. Some of these guys you see in one time zone one night, and the other the next, a little bit like yourself. Yeah. You showed up today, and you had your credential. It just happened to be for another game for another network. How did you know? I, the, we're travel. Scorecard throws it up there. Good defense that time from the much smaller fantasy. And a great look by Copeland, too. I like this kid on the move. Langford and one. That's what you've been looking for. Absolutely. He has arrived, I think. You mentioned the Merlin game. He's got the ability to dominate a game. And I think it's just his nature that fit in, be part of the team. Now it's time to step up and perform. Pretty good. Got the Beckham look. I was thinking of doing that myself. Ooh, I think that'd be a good look on you. You're going to kind of flare it out like that too? <laughs> the color and the I don't the know body. if I'm capable of that. You should try though. So Indiana with a little bit of life. Back to within a dozen here in the closing minutes of the first half. And it gives a little hope to the audience as well. Little horn set, ball screen, empty side. Now Kenton fired it up there too strong. Lanford has it in his hands again. He gives it up, he should get it back. Instead he gets a screen and goes the other way. Now Palmer almost reached in there. Gotta go side to side. Finnessy penetrates and draws the foul on Watson. Well, what a difference when he's in the game. And then going left, putting it on the deck, created some havoc underneath. And uh, this is more like it. That's why he's an All American. The ability to finish the deal, get to the free throw line, and make it three. Coming your way on the
Duke Deep Halftime Report with number one Duke have its number one player available tonight. How would Florida State rebound from last Saturday's last second loss to the Dukies? And who Casey needs to see step up in our upcoming Wisconsin-Maryland game? Joe Raff, see you at the break. All right, Rob, looking forward to it. These Hoosiers trying to get another come from behind win. In fact, in each of their last eight wins, they've trailed this year. Trailed by as many as 18 tonight. Uh, they're a confident team, and they do play great defense. So you can come out from underneath. I was at the uh, Butler game. My goodness. Pretty exciting. Mm -hmm. Rob Fantasy finishing that one off. I, I, don't know, I don't know if Stoner's still talking to Casey, but Palmer needs 17 points more. <laughs> Just in case they have a little dialogue on that. And then all of a sudden, the guys turn the corner with a good defense, some go, shot blocks, some runouts. And Langford put a little spice into the game with his action. How about how he's NCAA tournament projections right now? He has 10 Big Ten teams in the field. When you're looking at the net rankings, there are 10 Big Ten teams in the top 50. No other conference has more than seven. It's, it's, a, it's exclusive. The competitive teams, the venues are part of it. It's difficult to win on the road here. It's a uh, fan base is just extraordinary. And you've got the two Michigan teams at the top of the standings right now, but then a big mess in the middle. That's part of what makes tonight so important. Two of the seven teams within a game of 500 in the middle of the Big Ten standings going head to head here. And all of these, every night you can advance a little bit too. You know, you get a win, you get an opportunity because they're so highly rated. They hit it in six seconds, I believe. They really have a significant Tennessee hits the first here in the Big Ten standings right now. Look at that. Seven teams within a game of 500 in the middle. And then there's Maryland, which quietly has won five in a row. About that. Well, that's not pretty. No, that was not. Maryland and Wisconsin will follow us tonight. How about, how about Anthony Powell the other night? I, I just Man. love the way he played. Fernando as well, Smith. I mean, they've got themselves in that. Ooh, that was almost a backcourt. Defense collapsed on Palmer, so he kicked it for a Copeland three. And then a foul on the rebound goes on Nebraska. I'm not sure who they're going to give it to, but a little aggressive over the back. Yeah, Brady Hyman, seldom used post player, his first foul. And Nebraska has gone cold. They've kind of taken their turns going cold in this game. The Huskers won for their last 10. Shooting a little quickly now, I think. And Chris defense is buttoned up on that end. It's the eighth foul, so one on one coming here. And defensively, they've been good, though. Pull somebody to 15 points with three and change left. A really good offensive team. Yeah. A bunch of white shirts under the, underneath there, so take your pick as who they put on the line. It's going to be Clifton Moore. Instead of Rob Finnessy. So the sophomore from Ambler, Pennsylvania. He's played in about half the game so far. Has one and one. That's the second. Pretty athletic kid watching him practice. Archie Miller has said he'd like to go a little bit deeper than he's been going lately. Part of the issue is the injuries have really not given him a chance. He was tied four guys at one point were out. A little hold there for Lang. What Gimpy, too. Tough matchup. Palmer puts a lot of pressure on you with his cutting, his ball handling. Langford is hobbled there. They may have to take him out. Let's see. Now, shaking it off. Kind of staggered there and then yeah. reaches for that left side, that left leg out of bounds. Last touch by Nebraska. Too much traffic with the crossover. Watson's a guy that called Tim this summer and said, Coach, we're going all the way. I'm going to do anything I can to help this club. Tim was on vacation. He was like shocked he got the phone call. Of course, his dedication to the game and Tim attributes a lot of it to Armin Gates, the assistant coach. Always chatting with him, building him up. He needed to make great decisions. Inside the three-minute mark. Nebraska's led by as many as 18 in this first half. Indiana climbing back to within 10. And now the senior Morgan finds the freshman finishing. Devontae Green. 
sorry, dude. Jim. Langford's got to come for the ball, too. They're not going to be versatile. Morgan backing his way in. Threw it up there and a roll to round it out. Copeland's got it. Can't beat the shot, though. Here's Watson. Nice rebound by Palmer. Boy, he is active, isn't he? Quick feet. This is more the same for Indiana. They got killed on the defensive glass against Maryland the other night. Knocked out of bounds. It'll stay here. Got out-rebounded 18-3, mm -hmm. an offensive rebound, and that led to just a bunch of second-chance opportunities for Maryland in that game. A uh, big thing for Indiana is to rebound. They're not imposing up front, but it's all about checking out desire. Take a break. Closing minutes of this first half in Bloomington. Ten-point game, 208 left in this first half, and a bit of a scary moment for Indiana there. Romeo Langford injuring that right leg, but seems like he's moving okay afterwards. I'm not sure where it happened at the end. Or I think that that comes after some oh, after the incident. Okay. Nick Roberts scrambles to the floor and starts an opportunity for the Hoosiers. Clifton Moore, with a foul. How about that? He's shown he wants more. Terrific, aggressive maneuver, and you're right. The Roberts, he stirs it. He's the guy that gets down and dirty. Whatever you have to, he offers it up. But boy, does that instill confidence and push you forward. Big time play, huh? And then he gets this offensive rebound. Boy, that kills you. You don't squeeze and take the shooter. This is inspiring for Indiana going at the time at the halftime. Is that brush? They take away the lob. Inside 10 to shoot. Langford strong baseline take. Then got in a tough spot and turned it over. Nice give. Uh, he had him, but he didn't give it up. Palmer ahead of the pack and said Thomas Allen short with a three. Long rebound pulled in by the Hoosiers. It's a 9 0 Indiana run. Back to within eight as we near the one minute mark. Nebraska's offense is really stymied. Look at this kid, huh? So strong. He is. A little kiss. Seven for Langford. It's down to six. If anything, you've got to force him a little bit left. I know he can go that way, but it takes away some of his strength. Look at McRoberts again. Able to get his hand on it. Boy, from total control to a lot of mishaps right now for Nebraska. It's Palmer. Copeland straight away to silence the crowd and snap the skid for the Huskers. Their first bucket since the 9.06 mark. And that's one of the reasons Roby with the two fouls, too. A lot of this, uh, these problems have occurred with him out of the game. That cheap foul he picked up. Boy, they needed that. Oh, yeah. they? Absolutely. Crowd wants McRoberts to shoot it. They got a 1 3 1 here at the end. Ooh, what a bad foul. He's going to put Langford at the line. So look back at the three. He just knows, too. He got rid of that basketball as well. And uh, they've used the dribble beautifully. They've been able to cross court the basketball. And, of course, get the puppy set here at the top. Number 14, drilling it. Isaac. Two shots for Romeo Langford, who hit all nine of his free throws against Maryland the other night. As a team, Indiana was 16 for 16 at the line. Tonight, just four for seven. Yeah, he, in a way, he's Jordan-like. What I mean by that, the confidence in the jump shot is building and building, and that's, and I think, that eventually during the course of this season, he is going to be just that much of a tougher out. Each in so many ways and areas. They take him out now, no foul. And, For the final possession of this half, if Tim Miles and Nebraska choose for that to be the case. And they're going to get a ball screen, dribble drive. you got to stay at home on the shooters in the corner. Palmer can break it down with the dribble. They've got it in his hands. He gets oh. by Fitzner and slams it down. Boy, he was salivating at the big guy trying to protect him. 
Fitzner had to turn at least once to get some assistance. Oh, what a roller coaster ride this first half was. Unbelievable. Huh? That maybe that's a little stimulus for the Huskers as well. But Indiana back in this thing. What a cross this kid possesses. Bang! Send it in. Big time hammer. Looking at the clock. The eyes tell the story. Yeah, you can see it. Right? <laughs> Head and shoulder fake and to conclusion emphatically. So seven first half points. For James Palmer as Nebraska looks for its first Big Ten road win. 31-22 at halftime here in Bloomington. We're going to break and get you back to Los Angeles. Rob Stone and the guys back to second half action in just a bit. on Big Ten Hoops, brought to you by Jeep Grand Cherokee. Here in Bloomington, Nebraska and Indiana through at the half. And the Cornhuskers raced out of the gates there in the first half, led by as many as 18. Indiana able to cut it back to within single digits. Joe Davis and Bill Rafter, and we started off talking about two of the top scorers in the conference. James Palmer on one side, Romeo Langford on the other. Palmer's got seven, Langford's got nine. They didn't disappoint. If any disappointment, I'll see Langford get more shots, but Palmer... Terrific off the dribble. I mean, this is just a one bounce pull, not a big challenge pull up, I should say, but his crossover is dynamite. He sets his people up, great control, and Romeo Langford, one of those guys, I just love to see him go to the rim a little bit more, take more shots, and then find them a little bit. Great finisher, the ability to get to the foul line as well. Game reset, sponsored by SoFi. Get your money right. Leading scorer for Nebraska was Isaac Copeland with 10. As the Huskers look for their first Big Ten road win at a team with high expectations. One of the oldest teams in the conference. Top four scores back from last year. Trying to get a big road win tonight. Here's Devontae Green curling to the rim. It was halfway down before popping out. And a good sign, Finnessy starting too, so they must feel comfortable about his health and his ability to be the choreographer. Listen, they put both point guards on the floor to begin this half. Finnessy and Green. Here comes Langford. Up ahead. Justin Smith. Uh, Justin can elevate with the best of them. Great presence to find by Langford. We're right back in touch now. This team's really took turns going through tough offensive stretches in that first half. Nebraska went two for its last 14. This has been their best guy. They do a 12 for Copeland. They do a nice job. Copeland fakes as though he's going to ball screen and just slips to the goal, empty side. Here's Langford. Inside attempt to shoot, Smith to screen for Green. Go on, Roby, I think he got the dribble, maybe he did pick a foul on him. In and out, and Langford fired it up there from 25 feet, last touch by Indiana. Yeah, this is just heads up play here. Pretty good hustle now. Right away, the vision. And how about the nice touch? You know, Oscar Roberts from years ago, he had a wonderful feel for where everybody was. I think this kid does as well. You do remember Oscar. Yes, yes, I can go back that far. Nice play here. Green, Green with a read. Early turnovers in the second half for Nebraska. Oregon wants it inside against Roby, who's got two fouls. Smith takes it into him and draws the third. How about that? What a nice opportunity dribble uh, by Smith. But you're right, Morgan loaded up on him first, taking the game to him. Not a big decision over Tim Miles. Looking at his staff, and I think they're going to take him out. Too early, maybe. The two shots here for Justin Smith. Yep, Roby will sit down. Tanner Borkhart comes on. How fast the complexion of games change. Extraordinary. With a blink of the eye. And usually started by or stimulated by defense. One of two for Smith. Was 18. It's down to eight early on here in the second half. Palmer and Copeland have to do a job now. Yeah. 
And Uglin Watson, who's been quiet today. From the free throw line, he's got his second bucket. Boy, does he spring up with that. Pull up, big time. Four years starter having a career year. Morgan gets loose with blown defense from Nebraska. I'll say, no weak side. Everybody facing their man. Of course, Copeland tried to go top side. Heads up play on the dime. That off arm. Thomas Allen, nice crossover. Hangs off the back iron. He's one for six. Langford up for the rebound. Romeo Langford, Euro steps. No. Morgan follows it. How about that sprint by Morgan? A quick timeout by Tim Miles. There is life in Bloomington. Sometimes you don't recognize your team. You recognize Langford, though. The soft touch and Morgan trying to finish big time. Fans up, players up. Got it going. Within six, closest they've been since a few minutes into this game, Bill. You excel in communication, Joe. And it was lacking here. Nobody paying attention whatsoever. Who has whom? Is that proper English? Uh, we'll no. go with it. And the ability to slip it. And look at all the heads. Nobody sees the cutter. Excellent play. Great formation. Negligent D. Ron Morgan able to stuff it home. Top two scores for this Indiana team on the season. And Morgan and Langford leading the way again tonight, both with nine. Got to go through these two here. Palmer and Copeland. Palmer will watch shot. it up there. Barely scrapes the front of the rim. Contested. That's one of those we're running a double for you. You don't have to shoot unless it's a good one. Better job looking side to side, trying a little bit more. Shot clock lines inside of 10. Here's Green around a Smith screen. He rolls to the bucket. Five to shoot. And Green will. He knocks it down and brings Indiana back to within three. That kid is a very effective offensive player. Thinks it, feels it, delivers. To the jeans a little bit, huh, Brother Danny? Nice slip. And Borkar. Yeah, nice play by Palmer, who's such a threat to keep it, hesitate, and go himself. Root Canal tomorrow for Borkar. Some pretty good minutes off of the bench tonight. Green now turning the corner. He got cut off. He found Smith. Morgan jousting for the rebound, and a jump ball will send it to Nebraska. Copeland, if he checked out properly, he would have been over the back, but straight up. Good call with the jump ball. What do we got here, Joe? The confidence to stroke the ball. Get the puppies organized. Deliver with a little nylon out of Long Island, Lutheran. What an NFC Championship game we've got lined up for you. The Rams and the Saints presented by Intuit TurboTax Live with coverage beginning at 1 Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific on Fox and Fox Sports app on Sunday. First time these programs met up, Bob Knight's fourth season as the head coach at Indiana back in 1974, and Indiana winning that game. In a year where they started off 31-0 before losing to Kentucky in the regional final. How about that? Bob Knight, what an institution in college basketball. And since Amazing. Nebraska joined the conference, handful of years ago they've beaten Indiana five of the nine matchups and they've led from start to this point tonight well, so many people ask me about Bob Knight here I'm a twice seven and a half of that long jumper still an icon here's Finnessy finding Langford nice rotation though he's going to become more of a volume shooter I think Watson steps into one and drills it. How about that guy? Those went to a quiet. So about 12 shots per game for Romeo Langford on average. You think that should be higher? I, I, I think 15 to 20. Wouldn't nobody would be upset at it. 
Jones is such an all-around player, sometimes I think he forgets about the weapon he possesses or weapons. He's got it here with the shot clock winding down. The lost handle. And here comes Nebraska. Watson pushing, leaving it for Palmer, who missed the bunny. What a short arm that one. Wow, I'll say nobody around either. Watson will take care of it. <laughs> He'll take three over two any day, won't they? Uh, if you don't do it, I might as well take over myself. Little guy, and sticking it. the double figures. Back on the floor, he had 26 in a Nebraska win a couple years ago. Morgan in the lane. Got it. That's the guy to go to if you don't have the weapon outside. A nice little hook game, both hands. Clever, good footwork. Bruce Hoosier into double figures tonight. The All Big Ten post player. There will be on the sideline coming in with a little under 14. It's a foul on Justin Smith. Hands touching hands. I know though in college basketball, but the ability to stroke the ball, I think he's done a better job with that. And then the turn the other way, the early push. And one of those guys that I think wants to put this team on his shoulders. Watson, such a tough, tough kid. Glenn with a good, solid year thus far. 13 points, shooting over 45%. Those shooting numbers were way down by his standards, kind of a down junior season, but he's bounced back in a big way. Here's Roby off of the bench. Morecart can't get it. It'll stay on this end. You mentioned Roby was getting ready to check in. Nebraska's different when he's on the floor. Oh, I have a different complexion. Everybody you know, can do their job in knowing that he, he's going to be the guy that the defense is going to be concerned about. up his miss. Everybody trying to migrate to the basketball court, caught that little area. Langford dumps it inside for the drop step. Morgan. Oh. Clifton Moore having a coming out party tonight. I'll five say. points in about five minutes on the floor. We both thought we'd see him a little more in the second half. He provided a spark. And the crowd loves yeah. him. Thomas Allen, catch and shoot, knocks it down. Boy, well, he shoots with such confidence, gets him organized. Considered one of the nation's top prep shooters, outside shooters coming out a couple years ago. Starting to find his range for Nebraska. Brewster Academy kid, well known prep school. Langford, baseline drive, got fouled by Palmer. That's more like it. I do like him on the wing a little bit. Give him a little room to go either way. Can't be matching baskets because the rest is coming down, nailing shots like this, getting lost with a little down screen. And of course, the bench gets a little bit hopped up, and why not? What happened to this play? Silence. They want to hear you. They may want to hear you. They definitely don't want that. That's why they came to the game. <laughs> I bet they're taping. The kid out of Michigan that's now in L.A. We love him. <laughs> One more for Langford. He's got both. He's got 11 tonight. A rest for Morgan. Pretty good move, too, with the TV timeout coming up. Roby inside now he's wide in the other corner he's the pitcher Watson over the top he's starting to feel it he is a tough kid having a really nice year that's a 45 46 percent 41 from three is what one three one a little bit of a change takes away your individual ability got the ball movement dribble drive and weak side rebound Genesee penetrates and cut off and it was kicked into the corner and Watson tracked it down. Not kicked intentionally, that's why they let it go, as you well know. Now Palmer, a foul to the bounce by Nick Roberts. 
And a 12-point game, and Glenn Watson, who had just three points during the first half, has exploded for 10 since the break, similar to what he did their last time out in the win against Penn State. It's not elementary, but it's pretty. Huskers by a dozen. Let's go inside their huddle with Tim Miles. Yeah, Romeo's going to try and do too much. Morgan's going to try and take over. We know the usual suspects. Let's get to them. Nice job. Hey. He knows that they know because uh, he was concerned about Palmer getting some fouls against him. And of course, Morgan is a guy now, too. You can ride those two of them here in Indiana. Again, they can't match baskets, though. Uh, they've got to get some stops. The ability of a nice pass, got to squeeze it. Ooh, for the hands of Borkhart, that's the 10th Nebraska turnover. They've been one of the best in the Big Ten this year at avoiding those. Romeo Langford. He can elevate now. Help comes from Copeland, then he gets fouled. Nice little job reading the defender, knowing size differential. In the end, doing a good job getting to the foul line. Oh, he's not shooting. Again, that continuation to no avail. Smith against Borkar. Went straight up. Did a nice job. Palmer rises and buries it from 18. And he really did a great job going to defense. Was on a shooting hand as well. Created that extra space. Quietly, Nebraska Bill has just kind of nudged the lead back. You look up and it's 14 again. Indiana have gotten to within three. They trailed by as many as 18. That's an offensive foul on Morgan. Good piece of officiate Butcher. The last couple of plays, other than not squeezing that one at the far end, able to read and prevent. Nice job. Plenty of time. Easy call. And number three on Juwan Morgan. I'm been impressed with Nebraska. I'm here. Yeah. Both ends of the floor. A lot of guys contributing. Got through some troubled waters with Roby having some foul difficulties. Yeah, they were really good early on this season, especially defensively, Nebraska was, which had been a nice change from recent seasons, but had fallen off on the defensive end the last couple games. A whole lot better tonight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they did a good job holding you under your field goal percentage, point total. This guy's been around, let's face it. Mm -hmm. it years ago. Indiana on the season shoots about 50%. Second in the country, the below 40 tonight against Nebraska. Wanted a backdoor cut from Allen. He got there in time to keep it from going out of bounds, but just seven to shoot. If you help. Allen's a guy you got to worry about. Watson has been the man in the second half. That was a tough shot. It was knocked out of bounds by Copeland. Pretty good defense there. Now you got to build on that if you're Indiana. I like Morgan on the box. I think it's a Copeland matchup with him. 1-3-1. One, one. There's Morgan out high. Smith posting. In the corner, here's Morgan. Hits the floater. How about that? Romeo able to put it on the floor, create some offense on his own. They moved the zone a little bit. It just opens up little crevices. 13 for Romeo Langford to lead Indiana. Let there be a threat out there. Don't put the ball over his head, Roby. Copeland hits the jumper over Smith. Ooh. With disdain, sort of stares him down and knocks that baby in. More of the 1-3-1 one, one that we've seen this year, I think. I've seen glimpses of it different times. Generally, at the end of the half, Tim uses it just to see what people do. A little kick. Back to 20. 
which is a clever maneuver too. See what they do, and then you can save it for later in the game. What's the playbook for beating the one-three-one? Well, a couple of things we said earlier. You got to get an angle to the elbow. You, know, you got to have a pass entry there. You must offensive rebound, ball movement. There's a lot of people uh, high ball screen here, just to get a little turn to the corner and break it down. You got to make these shots from the corner too. Everybody collapses on Smith. Somehow gets nice. it back and finds an open Morgan for the stop. Hang him with it. They're begging for these kids to get going. They've shown signs tonight. They've had an 11 0 run. They're racing an 18 point deficit. Nebraska's been able to answer each time, though. Here is Roby against Morgan, who's got three fouls. Nice kick. Allen's can spot up and knock down the three. What patience and understanding by Roby. Took the hit, found his partner. Eight now for Allen. Here's Morgan again. Good position over Copeland plus the foul. I love how he goes to that offhand when he pins you under the rim. This is a direct line pass. I think they were, yeah, they were still in the 1-3-1. One, one. They just didn't get back in position. Third foul on Copeland and Morgan to the line with a team high 15. We're rotating seven guys. Well, a lot to be said for it. A lot of coaches feel there's TV timeouts. You've got your own timeouts, the opponent's timeouts. It's not about rest. Well, seven guys in the rotation is two more than he used the other night against Penn State, right? And he just used the five starters yeah. in the second half. Baby steps. Well, that saves the dry cleaning, though. <laughs> nice hesitation. I love his dribble handle. Langford sticks with him. Necessarily known as a top flight defender. A Kenton catch and shoot. Way too strong. And Indiana's got it. Well, he doesn't hesitate. He shoots it with confidence. Straight man on the miss. Morgan asking for it inside against Borkhart. He resets. And faces up. Morgan. Gets it again, and this time finishes. Strong arm. Tough guy. And Borkhart got, got a little shot in the... Either the lip or the oh bottom of the nose. Oh, my goodness, and we've said it a couple times tonight, but he spent the day at the dentist office because he needs a root canal. Yeah. Tell you what. Playing away games in the Big Ten is like getting the root canal, though. Pretty solid effort by Morgan, the strong arm of the law, able to dominate in low. Drop step finish, painful. Training staff taking a look at Tanner Borkhart, who's in a world of pain. From a walk on, put on scholarship last year, got hit up high on that last possession. During the break, inside the huddle with Archie Miller. Eight straight minutes right now. We have to dig in one more at a time. It's a 12 point game. Cut it to 12, 10. Get it to seven. And just keep hanging tough. Hanging tough. The big thing you would ask me before about the 1 3 zone. But one thing they, I think they could add to that is if they get it to the box and look opposite. But it's all about passing it quickly or dribble, drive, and squeezing. And he did look really mm. anguish, didn't he? Yeah. Painkiller today, try and get him to be able to play through it. He's played 15 good minutes for him. But feeling it after that. Here's Palmer, who's been somewhat quiet today with nine, averages 20. Pretty shifty with the dribble, though. Head and shoulder. Watson had a poke Down away. Five. He's got just five to shoot. He's been a man in the second half of the Huskers. Lost the handle, and here comes Indiana. Oh. Until Watson, from his seat, is able to come up with a steal. And how heady is well known that time is your ally. How did he get his hands I have no on? idea. I don't think Langford even knew he was down there. Well, they should butt the book. Not a good pass there. Oh, by Palmer. Off of Copeland's hands. Yeah, Roby went to the rim. He should button hook and beg for the ball in the lane. Straight up man again. Langford against Palmer. 
Got his own miss and found Smith, who had knocked out of bounds by Allen with 12 to shoot. Let's look back at Watson coming up with that steal. That's incredible. This is a floor steal with a floor burn. Look at this. <laughs> awesome. That's amazing. Well, that's being a competitor. I don't even think he was recognized on the floor by no. Romeo, do you? It's like the uh, kick return where you lay in the end zone and throw it back to the guy. Romeo said we're fourth. Here's Green, high arcing three. Wow. I'm gonna get you home with that. Palmer senses an opportunity and takes advantage. And he does, he seizes it. This kid thinks offense, he is aggressive. Back to the one three one on the make. And Indiana solve it. Playing in the second half without one of their best shooters, Al Durham, we've not seen. Well, I think it's Lankford, elbow jumper. That's a spot. 15 for the freshman. Five and a half left in an 11 point game. What you just say, whittle it down, hang tough. Roby got great positioning. And uh, now gets bumped, and the possession arrow will send it to Indiana. Well, that was interesting. He dropped the ball on the block. I think he just pick it up and play on. I don't think he touches the floor while this is blocked. Well, maybe he did. Pretty close. Riffs are usually right. I didn't yeah. think that way when it was on the sideline. But... As we've seen much of this second half, two point guards on the floor, Finnessy and Green both. Morgan got close but couldn't finish. Nice job by Roby helping. Copeland is solid, that end of the floor. Roby not quite the same scoring output he had his last time, but making his impact in other parts of the game. Here's Watson, been carrying the scoring load since the break, but Nebraska again going cold and opening the door for Indiana. Should have passed the ball to Roby outside. Langford gets fouled on his way out. And yeah, this is more like Merlin. Huh? He's trying to ISO his guy, take right. advantage. About the same part of the game where we saw him really begin to do that, too. Provide the impetus. He knows. I think he recognizes how good he is and he can take advantage. Well, they thought it was a shooting foul. There's been a couple of these, haven't there? Yeah. Discrepancies? The foul, by the way, was on Isaac Copeland, and it's his fourth. And so, Borkar, I hope you're doing okay, buddy. You're, you're back in because I've got no choice. To Tim Miles. Oh, big tough kid though. Janon Langford, 20 of his 28, came in the second half against Maryland, and he's trying to take it into his own hands again. This time, no question, a shooting foul. He is so good with the bounce again. That better going left. Terrific going right and solid going left now. His first miss from the line today. One of the top recruits at Indiana in years. Committed in April and kind of a game changer. Signature moment for Archie Miller in his early tenure here. Trying to join Glenn Robinson as the only freshman with 22 points per game or better in Big Ten play. People forget how good Michael Red was. He was awesome. And, huh? and, you know, he couldn't make a three when he was at Ohio State early in his career. Ends up in the NBA when he agreed three, particularly with the Bucks. They're making a long one. And of course, big land down at Purdue with Gene Cady and company. Back to a 10 point game inside four and a half. Bork card rolling inside and getting fouled. Well, that's when he's got to finish, though. Nice job. Boy, he is wide. When he pins you, it's very tough to open up and guard him. He won't have any Sundays tonight, I don't think, huh? Chocolate bars, chocolate chips. That may feel good, though. Like, the Sunday may feel good. That's so cold in there. Chocolate chips, though, no. Fifty-five percent free throw shooter. That's why you got to make the layup when you get that kind of a free throw shooter. He's just counting his chicklets there. He's wondering if he's got a ball. <laughs> Two for five at the line tonight, Nebraska. 
Got the lead back to 11. And Borkhart was seven. That's one shy of his career high. The root canal game. Tanner Borkhart. Elbow is such a down. Now he can do some damage. Look opposite or nice dump down. Green travel. Size-wise, not the kind of guy you want to give it to under there. I think they've got something now. Elbow, dump down, look opposite. They got a good, clean look. Nebraska's just kind of been able to keep him at arm's length. As this game is rolled on. Hanging around, 11, under four. Post rubs. Use a little clock. Pick and pop. You're ready to shoot. Roby drives, got around him, and laid it in. Smooth. Smooth. He knows how to play. And right away again. Forces you to use some clock to 1 3 1. Langford got bumped. Yeah, he'll shoot two. I think they gave it to Roby, too. He's had a couple of mystery jobs. Fourth foul on Roby. Tim Miles trying to come up with a big road win. He's done it twice here in Bloomington. Archie Miller, can his squad come up with a big-time comeback? Last time out, Anthony Cowan topped 20 points for the fifth time this season as Maryland won its fifth straight. The now 19th-ranked Terps look to keep the rise going next as they host Wisconsin. But first, back to Joe and Rath for the final of Indiana-Nebraska. All right, Rob, as we take a look at our Jeep Grand Cherokee stat comparison, and Nebraska against one of the most efficient shooting teams in the country, and Indiana is playing great defensively tonight. They have been solid. Uh, great contributions. I think the mixing of the defense has been superlative. They're playing with a lot of confidence. Getting easy shots, too. Finding partners. Firstly, I think the 1-3-1's really slowed down. Don't you, the Indiana pace? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it takes a few seconds each possession for them to ID what they're looking at, mm -hmm. it looks like. And then they have a hard time attacking it. Like you know, first of the line here. I think you mentioned earlier, you don't see it that much right. either. So when it's, it sort of exposes you when it's thrown at you. And, of course, their size, you know, Archie worked on it. But you can't simulate their length and the way they cover. Blankford hit his first five free throws. He's missed two of his last three. Splits this trip. Set the floor a little bit. 3.20 to go. This is what Palmer does for you. Let's watch him play off the ball. Palmer's got seven assists. Yeah. Allen went hard to the rim, and a guy who's known as more of a shooter shows off some diversity to his game. Well, he can mix it up a little bit. Good so good sophomore to the line. Sorry, Bill. Pretty good open floor handle, too. He catches and he's ready to deliver. Confident foul stroke, too. Here's Roby. Back in with his four fouls. Well, this could really help the Brass if they hang on. I used to, in terms of confidence and understanding how to win, how to compete on the road. It was back-to-back -back road losses early on in Big Ten play. Tim Miles said he thought sapped his team of that confidence, that swagger they'd been playing with early. Didn't think that they got much of it back in the win against Penn State. He said, really, in order to get it back, you've got to come to a place like this and get a win. There's some uh, good ones earlier. See the ball? Mm -hmm. Creighton, Clemson. Oklahoma State. We're back home as folks were at that, by the way. It was great to see them. Yeah. Really bad. Great timing and a couple shots yeah, of the family, the right? Palmer fired up the three, wouldn't go. A little early, too, I thought. 14-point lead. Two and a half left. See the length that makes it a tough pass. Offline with a three, and Roby easily the rebound. That's the other phase where Indiana has continued to struggle. Minus 10 on the glass tonight after they were dominated by Maryland on the boards last weekend. What's the first thing Archie said to us? Got a rebound. Rebound. 
And you understood against Maryland. That's one of the best rebounding teams in the country. But Nebraska, second worst rebounding team in the Big Ten. Uh, they're not dominant size, but their overall size is pretty good. A lot of fours and sixes in the rebounding category. Copeland with five. You mentioned Palmer with his seven assists. He's not too far off from a triple double in this game with eight rebounds, 11 points, so seven assists. Watson so savvy and savvy. Clever, you're right. Just toying at this point. Leading Nebraska now with 15. A hole before the shot by Allen, I think. Well, you mentioned this kid. There's so many little things for this team. Hesitation, a little waltz, a little peekaboo. How do you do? Finish big time. A lot of the folks who fed it for the exits. A game where it looked like Nebraska may run away with it. Indiana made it interesting through the middle part. Sure. Nebraska again putting the pedal to the metal here towards the finish. You never know, right? You know, come ready. This league, no easy outs. This will be a third consecutive defeat for the Hoosiers. They get Nebraska back to 500 in the conference. Allen thought about it. Instead, I'll take a long two and leave it short. It'll be back-to-back -back wins for Nebraska after they lost back-to-back -back games for the first time this year. Langford fouled on his way to the bucket. We still gimp it a little bit there. What a performance by their floor leader. And again, the ability with Palmer to run the show just a little bit keeps him off the basketball. So many weapons that they have. Confidence been around before. And this kid wanted to show the coaching staff. Lead him to the promised land. He's 15 to lead the team as his teammate Isaac Copeland has fouled out of the game. 14 just behind him tonight. It's a quiet 14. Silent. Very, of course, again, a lot of his contributions are defense, particularly the one through one is length, some rebounding. Jim Olinari, are you giving a little bit of hug? There's something different in a Chicago hug. Ha, how so? you've ever noticed it. Sincere, affectionate. Just from Chicago, though, yeah, just, huh? Well, not a Midwest well, thing. Well, being from New Jersey, you know. I think it's a Midwest There's thing. There's no right? hugging involved. No. Permitted. No, no hugging in Jersey. You should try it sometime. <laughs> it might have lift my spirits, huh? <laughs> Inside a minute now. I mean, we talk about, you're talking during the pregame show tonight about outside of Michigan and Michigan State, who do you fear in the Big Ten? I think Nebraska coming into the year was a popular pick to answer that question. And a performance like tonight may reassert themselves in that conversation. Absolutely. I, I think this would be great things. That, that particular goal. In terms of their confidence, they're looking forward, who they can play, what level can they compete. Langford's still doing the stretch of the leg. Sound performance. You're going to see them in a few nights against Michigan State back in Lincoln. That should be quite an environment. Thomas not happy with the way his team played yesterday. Is he ever, though? No, no. Roby comes up with one more block, and they'll run the clock out. Are you suggesting he's not a happy man? No, no. When it comes Just to his team, he's, he's not never, always happy. Yeah, yeah. He's congenial in all other areas. Never complacent. I'm looking forward. I hear the building, and the first time I've been on the campus with the new building. You're going to enjoy it. And the crowd reaction. Great town. Looking forward to it. Trying to extend what is already a school record 20-game home win streak when the Spartans come to town. Tonight, they get their first top 25 road win since they won here in Bloomington in 2016. A 15-point win for the Cornhuskers in a game where they do not trail. We'll get you to studio now. Rob and the guys take it away in Los Angeles.
All right, guys, we're going to take you back to Bloomington in a moment. Uh, but first, nine double-doubles for Mr. Bruno Fernando coming into this one. Five of the last six games, Maryland has really been on a roll. That great run has elevated them up to number 19 in the AP poll. They have 11 win Wisconsin coming up next year on FS1. This is going to be the first of two straight games versus top 20 opponents for the Badgers. So that's still to come. Rob, Steve, Casey here with you. But the big talking point right now, Nebraska going on the road to Assembly Hall to get really an emphatic wire-to-wire -wire type win. Our bracket expert, Howie Schwab, has Nebraska as a four seed and a clutch road win over another team, Casey, that's projected to go to the yeah. NCAA tournament. All it does is reemphasize maybe just how good and how underrated this Cornhusker team is. This was a type of win that they couldn't get last year. And you asked us who's the next team that's going to contend with the Michigan teams. And I said that I liked Nebraska, but they this was the doubt that I had. Can they go on the road and win a road game? Last year, they were four and five, Rob, but none of those wins on the road were against teams that made it to the tournament from the Big Ten. This year, a much better overall conference, and they go out on this one, it's huge. Uh, you, you can't underestimate how big this road win was for them. No doubt. And those 51 points that they allowed... That is the fewest Indiana has scored in a game this season. For more, out to Bloomington. Raff with Nebraska head coach Tim Miles. All right, coach. You predicted it. You, you thought your kids were uh, maybe lacking a little confidence on the road, but you, they did a great job. Yeah, I was really impressed. You have to get out to an early start in this building, get the crowd out of it, and our guys are really sharp. Then we had to withstand that punch at the end of the first half, and we just did enough, and I thought Palmer's dunk was huge for us at the end of the first half just for a confidence boost, and that really carried over to the second half. And how about Watson? I mean, he can run the show for you, but then you've got Palmer to do some things, and he can play off the basketball. It's a pretty tough duo. Yeah, that's a good group, right? And then Tom Allen, in the meantime, is going to just stand there and, and knock him dead, too. So Palmer is a very versatile kid good defender and then Glenn I thought he was really rolling for a while tonight that was fun to watch uh, Tim you told me uh, the other day about being on a vacation Watson calling you say I'm going to lead you to the promised land yeah. uh, I think it's a pretty good start tonight isn't it yeah you know I, I can't hope for enough good things happening to Glenn Watson he's one of my favorite kids I've ever coached and and he's a loyal dude and you can see tonight why I like him especially coach <laughs> okay congrats you got a big smile you got Michigan State yeah, that's uh, back to work tomorrow. we got coach Izzo ready to run. Oh, here we go. I know you like him. How about that? I love him. I love, I love playing him. You always get better from playing those guys. Should be fun. It's on FS1, isn't it? Absolutely. Look forward to seeing you. Thank you. We're looking forward to seeing Rob Stone again. Yeah. We're back in Los Angeles. Thank you, Rob.